This is Bill Ryan from Project Camelot, and I am here in Vienna on the 8th of September 2009. I happen to be in Vienna because I've just returned from a conference in Poland, and I have just met Jane Burgermeister, who up until now has been a figure shrouded in mystery. <laughs> and it's my great pleasure to introduce you visually to the world here by being the first person in the, uh, the internet community to have, to have made a trail to find out, and here I'm going to make a joke, whether you really exist or not, and I can demonstrate to everyone that you truly do. What, may I ask Jane, is, uh, was your response when you realized that you had an opportunity to basically to give a message to the world on camera, which is what I want to support you in being able to do. Well, thank you, Bill, for, as I say, taking the trouble to come all the way here. And it's a bit off the beaten track here in Vienna. It is, however, a significant place, as it turns out. It is the place where Baxter um, contaminated 72 kilos of vaccine material with the live bird flu, and so nearly triggered a global pandemic just a few months ago in February. This attempt to trigger a pandemic failed because of the alertness of people in the Czech Republic who detected it in a laboratory in biotest. However, it has now turned out that Baxter still has at least a large um, amount of that 72 kilos of bird flu. And we're um, coming to a point where we have only perhaps a few weeks until the government here in Austria and other governments around the world intend to start injecting people with um, so-called swine flu vaccine material, which we have every reason to fear is going to be a big hazard to our health and has been designed to be a hazard to our health, even if it isn't contaminated with the live bird flu virus, as it might well be. So um, my message that I want to give to people, if I, if I can give any message, is that time is running short that we all of us now have to recognize the scale of the threat and danger to us individually and collectively, and we need to take uh, steps uh, and organize to stop this mass vaccination program um, as soon as possible. And as we were discussing when we were just chatting before we started this video interview, you feel a tremendous sense of urgency, don't you? This is driving you. Well, unfortunately, we have seen how, in spite of mounting and growing protests in the USA and now in Europe, the latest polls show that 29% of the Germans are categorically going to refuse the swine flu vaccine. In spite of all that, the governments are pressing ahead relentlessly. Who is pushing with tremendous determination this unwanted, unnecessary and dangerous program? on us, and it's coming in just a few weeks. What's interesting to me is that we, like you, get reports from all over the world, and it seems that governments in every first world nation, and maybe other nations too, seem to be preparing in almost like marching in step with this thing. This is coordinated, isn't it? Absolutely, and if you look at the legal framework, um, they are all following the same legal framework, and it's um, the International Health Regulations of 2005, which give WHO, the World Health Organization based in Geneva, the um, power to control how governments respond to this pandemic, which WHO has itself declared. And every country has a more or less identical pandemic plan, which hands power over to the World Health Organization, which allows the World Health Organization to take over the police and the health forces. And um, every country will set up a crisis committee, which will uh, determine you know, what vaccine centers are established, what groups are going to be targeted for vaccination, and so on. And that is the reason why it's so coordinated and synchronized, because there is a single body behind it, and this is the World Health Organization, the UN, and the people who back that, the banking uh, cartel and family dynasty, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. Now